What's up, Washington football fans? Uh, welcome to another video here with the Washington Football Maniacs. This video today, I want to talk about the biggest disappointments uh, on the Washington football team to date. Now, hopefully, this narrative will change toward the end of the year. We still have a, 11 games left, so a lot of time left for these opinions to change, and I fully expect my opinion to change on some of these uh, players. But for right now, to date, these are the players that have been the most disappointing to me so far. Number one, Curtis Samuel. I was really excited when we signed Curtis Samuel because I know that you know he's, he's like a gadget type of player. I mean, he could do it all. You know, wide receiver, he can line up in, a, in the backfield. You know, he makes big plays off of those sweet plays. I mean, you know, he can really be a secret weapon. And I, my thought process was, you line up Curtis Samuel with Terry McLaurin, and then this new guy, uh, Deami Brown, and, uh, you know, Logan Thomas, Cam Sims, you're going to have plenty of weapons you know, either a weapon to hand the ball off to or to pass. And so I was really, uh, I was really excited to see what Curtis Samuel can do for us. Unfortunately, Curtis Samuel has been injured and not healthy for the last, I don't know, since what, July? And, <clears throat> excuse me, so um, we have barely seen Curtis Samuel. I think he has been in for, what, three plays, three or four plays this entire season so far. I mean, to date, we're six games in, and we have only seen Curtis Samuel in basically maybe about that, that many plays. So it's been a disappointment because I know that Curtis Samuel can be a game changer, and it's just frustrating because, it, it you know, I just feel like whenever we get these players and we're like, you know, these players can be dynamic because they were dynamic with other teams. They come here and they just, I don't know, they struggle. They're injured the whole time. I mean, it just, it really makes you wonder, but he's definitely been a disappointment for me so far. Now, if he can get healthy and he can start getting some more playing time, then who knows? There's still time for, for Curtis, Curtis Samuel, I believe. The next guy that I am disappointed with has been Jamin Davis, our first rounder. Okay, whenever that you draft a first rounder, you totally expect the first rounder to be able to make an immediate impact. Now, you may say, okay, well, there's exceptions to that. Like if you draft a quarterback in the first round, you know, sometimes they may not even start um, there are situations where that happens, and when you throw them in there, then, you know, they're going to struggle because, you know, quarterback, I mean, that that's, that's a tough position to be in. Now, on the flip side of that, you know, Jamin Davis, I guess, is supposed to be kind of the quarterback of the defense. Uh, he, he's supposed to be the, the Mike guy, and, you know, so far, I mean, it seems like his playing time has decreased. Ron Rivera has said that, well, you know, it's because of maybe game plans and things like that. But, I mean, if your first rounder is not involved in the game plan, I think there's something wrong with that. Now, you know, I've seen small flashes of what Jamie Davis has the ability to do. You know, he's got some speed. He can tackle most of the time. Um but he still seems like he's raw. And maybe it takes another, you know, season or two for Jamin Davis to really show you what he's capable of. So, you know, you can't write him off in season one. I mean, uh, for goodness sakes, we, we had, uh, it was a Josh Doxson for, what, two or three seasons, three or four seasons, maybe, I don't know. Um, I think we had him for most of his rookie contract. So, you know, you can't give up on Jamie Davis after six games. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. But so far, he's just, he's not been the impact that I thought he was going to be. Um, and of course, you know, the other guy that I am extremely disappointed in, maybe it's unfair, but 
I think it's definitely fair enough. It's Landon Collins. Now, I understand Landon had a very tough Achilles injury last year. And honestly, for a lot of players, they would probably still be trying to come back. You know, Landon Collins, I mean, he, he got himself back within what was it, seven months. I mean, it's unheard of whenever you have an Achilles injury like that. So I understand that, and that could be somewhat of a factor, but I don't think that you can blame Achilles injuries on, you know, the ability to be able to tackle. <laughs> um, Landon Collins has not been able to make open field tackles. Landon Collins, of course, he, he's not been able to cover. I mean, there's been so many blown coverages, and it seems like whenever that's the case, it's either, well, I'll get to this in a second, but, <coughs> excuse me, it seems like it's it's been, um, Landon Collins is always involved in somewhat. You know, Landon Collins doesn't have the speed that could come from his injury um you know he does seem to play a little bit better when he's in the box when he's more of a linebacker and i think that ron rivera is slowly pushing him closer to that i think honestly that's landon collins's last you know stand of being able to make a difference on this football field and that's to really, you know, help out the linebackers because he's been zero help uh, within coverage downfield. And, you know, as we, that's a good, I guess, natural progression into the secondary. And we're talking about William Jackson the third, who was supposed to be touted as our best corner. And if he's our best corner, we are so sadly in trouble because William Jackson III has been burnt every single game. Every single game, uh, WJ3 has been burnt. And if not burnt, he's been, you know, called for pass interference. And, you know, you can just see it. It's like he hardly ever tries to get his head around. You know, it's like, why can't he just try to anticipate, get his head around, you know, if the receiver makes a great play on it, whatever. But, I mean, if you're going to sit there and you're going to have pass interference uh, or you're going to commit pass interference on, on the receiver, you might as well let the receiver catch the ball. It's going to be the same difference, you know, honestly. I just, you know, he has been such a big disappointment. I mean, it's just every huge chunk play, you know, blown coverage, it seems like it's been... William Jackson III and Landon Collins seemed like both of those guys have been involved in, you know, one way or another. And maybe that's been unfair for me to say. I, I may have to go back and look. I'm sure that some of the other guys have been, you know, burned as well. But it seems like the majority of the time, William Jackson III, either he can't bring the, the guy down, you know, he's he's all up and, in, 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 you know, basically impeding the um, uh, opportunity for the, the receiver to catch the ball, pass interference, or he's just playing out getting burnt. I mean, you know, it's just he has not been worth the money that the Washington football franchise has spent to bring him in. He's, he's not been an upgrade whatsoever. Again, all of these guys, you know, were – you know, we still have 11 games left, so I understand that, you know, we need to be patient. And I'm the one who has preached patience. But when I look at these guys, especially in defense, and I just see, you know, what they have accomplished so far, what it, they have done, it's just, it, it, it's made me upset, it's made a lot of fans upset, you know, because... The defense was supposed to be in this fantastic unit. And, you know, I'm picking out these individual players, and I, I could certainly name more, but these players really stood out to me as being some of the biggest disappointments so far. And I realize not all these players are on defense. Curtis Samuel, you know, he's been a disappointment so far. I can't really say that Dammy Brown has been a disappointment. I, I, you know, he's a rookie. 
and uh, he's starting to make some plays and he's starting to get involved a little bit more. So, you know, he's he's not starting off the way that Terry McLaurin started off, obviously, um, but Terry McLaurin is a special player. I mean, he's just, out of everybody, Terry McLaurin has always been the constant. And I just love that guy so much. Uh, but, you know, I think Diami Brown, I think he's coming around. There, there's still hope for him. But, yeah, man, I mean, there's just been some disappointments on this team. We just got to hope that they continue to work and figure it out. You got 11 games, you're 2-4. and four. Probably not going to win the, the uh, division this year. Dallas is like what five and one just beat the Patriots. You know they're they're they could possibly I I know whenever the Cowboys start you know a season and they're <clears throat> five and one or you know four and two whatever the case is, people start talking about Super Bowl. They're not going to the Super Bowl, but they are going to wind up winning the division this year. I, I fully guarantee them win, winning the division. For Washington, they're just going to have to continue to, to fight and hope that they can finish the season hot and finish the season looking more like the Washington football team that we expected. And, you know, hope that year three is the year that we start actually seeing some payoff on the field. All right, this video has been way too long. You guys take care. I will see you in the next one.